Hi folks, welcome back to uh, Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, the purpose of this video here is to demonstrate how to calculate potential differences uh, in cases where there is spherical symmetry. So what we're looking at here, we've got this uh, insulating sphere that's going. we're going to assume has a charge of plus Q uh, inside its radius, which is uh, A. This thing is going to be surrounded by a conducting shell of radius, uh, inner radius B, outer radius C. In this example, we're going to assume the conducting shell carries a uh, net charge of minus 2Q on it. And what we're going to try to do here is calculate the difference in potential between A and B. So meaning that the difference in potential between uh, this surface and this surface. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and calculate the potential difference between A and C as well. All right, so calculating potential difference, let's see, the potential difference between two points is minus the integral e dot ds, where the ds is small displacements uh, going along the path between the two points you're calculating potential from. And to apply this, we have to choose two points here on this surface. So I'm going to choose some point here on, uh, on this surface. I'm just going to pick this point right here. And now I'm going to pick a point. Uh, on this inner surface here. And I'm going to just choose a nice easy point, maybe right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply this integral along this path from A to B. So this is the path, and actually let me put that in green. This is the path that we're going to be applying this integral on right here, that path. Now, some good news. Because of the symmetry of the problem here, there's no reason to think like this point. Any points along here are at different potentials. And same thing for uh, this surface. This the whole entire surface should be at the same potential for a couple of reasons. One, the symmetry, but two, this is a conducting uh, surface in this example. So remember, if you've seen my uh, video about conductors, uh, this surface itself should be an equipotential. So really I can calculate between any point outer surface here and any point on the inner surface. I'm just going to make this nice and neat. And I'm going to call this my initial point, point one. And there's my final point, point two. Now, you'll notice that what we're going to need here, we're going to need the electric field at all points between them. And to get that electric field, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply Gauss's law. Noticing that this is a very high symmetrical case here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself a Gaussian surface here to apply the integral on. And I'm going to make my Gaussian surface inside of this. I'll draw that in green. So this green surface here again is going to be a Gaussian surface. It has a radius r. I'm going to go ahead and write out Gauss's law. The total flux through any closed surface, which is given by the integral e dot dA over the entire surface, is equal to 4 pi k times the charge inside the surface. And I've already went ahead and did this. Uh, in this example, the charge, it's not necessary to talk about charge density here, because if I imagine my Gaussian surface getting a little bigger or a little smaller, the charge inside of it doesn't change. The charge inside this surface is the total charge on this uh, inside here, which is what I call plus q. So the right-hand side's already done. Talk about this left-hand side. <clears throat> so when you're dealing with Gauss's law, you always have to kind of investigate the relationship between the electric field vectors and the dA vectors. Just a little reminder, dA vectors have the direction of the normal with outward positive. So if I looked at some dA vectors anywhere on this green surface, they would point radially outward. And, and you got to picture this in 3D. There's the ones pointing like this that make a 3, uh, not to this beige surface, but like this green one here. Uh, you got to imagine this is a sphere. And I don't think I got it quite perfectly centered in my picture. You have to imagine this green sphere perfectly centered on this. And these, all of these arrows here are dA vectors. And they all have directions uh, normal to the surface. Now, if I look at electric field vectors at these points, they would point dead away due to the symmetry of the problem. So no matter where I'm at anywhere on the surface, the electric field is going to be in the same direction as the dA. And therefore, the angle between them is 0 and the cosine is 0 is 1. 
Furthermore, there's no reason to think the electric field should be different here, 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 or anywhere on this green surface due to the symmetry of the problem. So the electric field can come out in front of this integral. So this ends up being magnitude of the electric field times the integral of dA, which is going to give me just the area of the Gaussian surface. 4 pi r squared equals right hand side 4 pi k times the charge inside the surface. I know that I might have skipped quite a bit in this step here, but again, I've got lots of examples about Gauss's law. Uh, feel free to go back and take a look at those if you're wondering how I got from here to here. These cancel. If we solve for the electric field strength, what we get is kq over r squared, like a point charge field. Now, um, being that this is positively charged, we know to an absolute certainty the net flux has to be outward. Therefore, these fields have to be radially outward. So there's my electric field vector. All right, now we can go back and start thinking about this integral. So the potential difference between 1 and 2 is going to be minus integral. And I'll just put, uh, well, we'll do this. Let's see, from 1 to 2, I guess. We'll call that from radius A to radius B of E, which is going to be KQ over R squared times R hat. Dot DS, where DS, you have to imagine, is our small displacements outward. They would have magnitudes of uh, like radial changes. So I guess the magnitude that I could say is DR, and they're in the radial direction outward. So I could call that uh, dr times r hat. Okay, now when we take two unit vectors in the same direction, they just uh, basically you get one out of that dot product. So we end up with minus k cubed. These can come out in front. Then we have the integral of 1 over r squared dr. Let's see, that's going to integrate to minus 1 over r evaluated a to b. I'm just going to take a minute and think about that, make sure I'm good, signs and everything. Minus sign is sitting here up front. This is r to the minus 2. Add 1, that's r to the minus 1, divide by the other part. Yep, we're good. Um, you'll notice that these uh, basically cancel. So we get kq times the quantity 1 over b minus 1 over a. So there's our expression for the potential difference between uh, 1 and 2, or from a radius a to a radius of b. Um, you'll notice that, you know, let's kind of investigate plus and minus signs. b is bigger than a. So this is a smaller value than this, um, number-wise, because if b is larger than a, then this number is actually smaller than this value. And that means that this thing is negative. We might wonder, hmm. Well, we're integrating from 1 to 2. The electric fields point outward. And remember, I always make every student I come across uh, always memorize the following statement. Electric potential always decreases in the direction of the field. So if we go from 1 to 2, that is a drop in potential. And... Uh, the reason why this expression is negative. So I hope this video helps demonstrate uh, how to calculate electric potential. Oh, one more, one more little uh, note. Even though I threw this in the problem, you'll notice that it didn't show up, and that's okay. You know, that's one thing students have to get used to. Not all the information you're given is always relevant to every calculation that you do here. The potential difference between A and B depends only on the electric field in this region. And that's going to depend only on the charge inside my Gaussian surface. So hope this video helps demonstrate how to calculate potential difference in cases of spherical symmetry. Have a great day.